Hey, good morning. It's a beautiful Tuesday. I'm thankful that you're here with me this morning as we dig into God's Word again. I hope you enjoy these uh, reflections. I know they're a lot of fun for me. I enjoy, I just enjoy getting to dig into God's Word with you. I know that I'm always encouraged and, and strengthened by what God shares with me as I read. And I hope that in some small way, I can be an encouragement to you. And that together, as we talked yesterday, we can all be, we can all submit ourselves to the authority of God's Word. We can all submit ourselves to the authority of God and together live out um, the grace that God would have us to live out. Um, I want to pick up, I mentioned yesterday how much I love the, the end, of, um, end, of, uh, end of this section of 1 Peter. Um, but I, I, want to, um, I want to read um, 1 Peter 5. Let me, I thought I had it marked, but I didn't. Here we go, 1 Peter 5. Um, where it says this. I'm going to read... Uh, I'm going to read uh, 6, I'm sorry, verse 7 through 11. Cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. We could spend days right there, couldn't we? Discipline yourself, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, stand steadfast in your faith. For you know that brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you've suffered a little while, the God of grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Woo, y'all. Good stuff right there. Good stuff. First, it says, cast your, cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Nah, cast your cares on him for Christ cares for you is the way I always read that one in the, in the NIV. Cast your anxiety upon God because He cares for you. That's one of those verses we can breeze over. But let me say, let me, let me listen to that again. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. We take the, take that. I take that literally, y'all. You can cast your cares. You can cast your anxieties. You can cast your worry. Like right now, I'm worried about this helicopter. That just passed overhead right now. That's kind of worse. I think you're going to get distracted by that. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about that because God has it. Cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. He's big enough to handle your anxieties. He's big enough to handle your fears. we got to give them to him first, though. If we don't give him our worries and our fears, he can't help us with them. So give him today your worries. Whatever you're worried about, whatever you're afraid of, whatever you're dealing with, give them to him. Why? Because he cares for you. The sovereign God of the universe, the giver of all life and of all glory, he cares for you. God cares for you. We cast our cares upon Christ because he cares for us. Don't hold on to your anxiety, y'all. Like the old hymn goes, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Give God your concerns, friends. Give them to God. And he will help you with them. Give them. Now listen, that doesn't mean they're going to magically go away. I wish that. I wish for that it's so. I wish giving them to him made them magically go away. That's not what's going to happen. But he will give you that peace that passes all understanding. He will. He will. His word says that. He will give it to you. Then I want to get to the next part, though. He says, discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you, you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you suffered a while, God of all grace, who has called you, will relieve, support, strengthen, and establish you. I love... It, it's a weird thing. It says here, it says, discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowl, prowls around looking for someone who he may devour. The Bible's full of imagery and, 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 and concepts. And one of my favorite images for Jesus is that he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That he he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. I, 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 if, you, if you've read C.S. Lewis's amazing works, the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, you're familiar with Aslan, the, the Christ figure who is a lion. Uh, Jesus Christ is the lion 
of the tribe of Judah. So many beautiful images of that. But notice the devil here says, like a lion. He seeks to roar. He seeks to prowl. There's thing. He's not the lion. Jesus Christ the lion. Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's not a lion who's out to devour, but he's a lion who's out to protect. So the devil passes himself off as something that he is not, because he is not the lion. Jesus Christ is the lion. The devil's a liar. He's the father of all lies, is what scripture says. The devil is not a lion. In fact, this lion acts like he's big and bad, seeking him who may devour. What does it say? Resist him. Resist him. Do not, do not, do not understand. He's not gonna, he's not, he's not gonna win. Resist him. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that others are suffering. But God's got this. He's gonna restore, replenish, renew. God's got this. The devil acts big and bad, but he's not. He's not. No, he's bigger than me or you. But he's not bigger than Jesus. He's not. Don't ever make the devil the equal of God, because he is not the equal of God. Scripture says, and in Revelation, when the story of the devil's fall is given to us in Revelation 12, he's a created being. He is not God's equal. God has no equal. The devil is not God's equal. He may be stronger than me and you, but he is not stronger than God, and he's already been defeated by God through the cross and through the empty grave. He's already been defeated. His power has been defeated. It has. So resist him. Stand strong. Don't be afraid. When temptation comes, don't be afraid. When troubles come, don't be afraid. Stand strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Stand strong in his grace. Stand strong in his mercy. Stand strong in his power. He's got this. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The devil looks big and bad. He's like a lion, but he is not a lion. Jesus Christ is a lion of the tribe of Judah. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. He's a bunch of bluster, a bunch of noise. But he's already been defeated. So don't be afraid of it. I always think of the words of the great theologian Mike Tyson. Everybody's got a plan to punch him in the mouth. The devil is big and bad in his mind. He's a bully. But he is powerless against the blood of Christ. Resist him. Resist him. He has no power over us, brothers and sisters. Resist him. And God will take care of us. So don't be afraid of the devil today. Don't be afraid. Nothing's greater than our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is more mighty. Don't be afraid. Resist the devil and he will depart from us. When Jesus resisted, he fled resist. Hey, God's got us, y'all. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for us. Don't be afraid. Don't be worried. Give it to Jesus today. Hey, love you guys. Be strong. No matter what you're facing today, no matter how big it may seem, no matter how scary it may seem, God has you. God has you. Don't be afraid. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Be encouraged. God's with you. Have a great day. See you then.